If you love your garden and you love your dogs, then you know the challenge is to having them coexist. But Les, you've come up with some solutions for that in your own home. Yes, I have uh, two dogs and I've learned the hard way on what to do and what not to do. What should gardeners and dog lovers think about as they're putting their homes together? Well, there's nothing worse for a gardener than come out and find fresh holes dug mm -hmm. in their garden. And there are some dog breeds that are just prone to dig, uh, digging, like dachshunds and terriers. It's just in their DNA. Um, some dogs dig because they're bored, so you take them for a nice long walk. And some dogs will dig to get to the cool earth in the hot summer weather. What other things should gardeners look for as they're preparing their garden? Um, also be aware that certain plants are poisonous or toxic and it's good to know exactly what plants you have, make sure your dogs don't eat them, have the poison control number on hand, but most adult dogs are, are pretty savvy about staying away from those plants. Also too, one thing I learned the hard way, dogs like to patrol the per perimeter of their fence and their territory, and if you plant stuff really close to the fence, they're going to run into it and get it torn up, especially new plants get torn up. You came up with a solution in your home mm -hmm. to really have them coexist, your garden and your dogs? Uh, well, what I do is I've got two things. You plant away from the fence so that they have room to go around, and then I've turned my whole backyard over to the dogs. Um, I still have plants back there, but they have room to, to run and exercise and get some shade, and the rest of my garden, um, I can do whatever I want, plant whatever I want. All right, so you've yeah. separated them? Yes. Given them both a world. Exactly. So I can enjoy both gardening and my dogs. Gotcha. Any other things that gardeners should yes, think about? Yes, it's really important to keep up, uh, clean up after your dog to make sure you don't leave their waste around. It's good for your health, their health, and the health of our waterways here. Right. It's another hot day, but we're in the shade in the mm -hmm. Enchanted Forest at Norfolk Botanical Garden, and Barkitecture is underway. Tell us more about that. Yeah, it's a really cool f exhibit we've got going on this summer. We've got about 30 designer dog houses, and it ties in with our habitats for people, plants and wildlife, and you can see what nonprofits have done, what museums have done, architects, contractors, and we've even done a couple of ourselves. There's so much creativity yeah. Yeah, happening it's great. in here. We were so pleased with the turnout and people really stepped up. So if people don't want to worry about dogs in their garden, mm -hmm. <laughs> they can bring them into yours. Correct. Uh, every Sunday uh, through October when we're having the uh, architecture going on, you can bring your dog in. Gotcha. Tell yeah. me more about some of your favorite architecture that you see here in Barkitecture? Well, one of my favorites is right behind us. It's the city of Norfolk. Um, it's like a tree house for dogs. One of my other favorites is the USS Mudator. Yeah. <laughs> and that one is so cool. Tell us more about yours, the one um, that you created. Well, I built one called Lucky's Log Cabin, and we used uh, logs from an area of the garden where the logs were going to be taken down, so I wanted to recycle, and I put a green roof on it. So. <laughs> Very cool, Les. And folks can come here at Norfolk Botanical Garden and take a look at architecture yep, through it's, October. Exactly. It's free with garden admission. Les, thank you. You're welcome.